there is so much to be said about what has happened to this nation and what is coming for this nation. If these fickle-minded people who love the news media, the mainstream news, news media, who claim to be Christian, who claim that God is with them, and they have the gall to literally live in La La Land, where they think of the one that's sitting in the White House is a real president. Something is wrong with their mind to believe that God is a liar, that he on one hand would tell you, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt, that on that hand he would lay out his commandments. And then on the other hand, he would give you the power to take the innocent, kill them, mutilate them, and use them for your own pleasure, for to use them to amuse yourself, to use them in, in the ways that they are using them. And you support that by supporting a man and putting a man and a woman in the White House. I mean, you take a good look at the woman in the White House right now, how giddy and silly she is. Take a look at her past pictures and the things that she has on her mind, and it is not God. These people that do these things on the left are fighting for transgender. They fight for abortion. This is all and pedophilia. This is all sexual. Don't you see that? Don't you see the sexual aspect of it? That this is what they are doing and this is why they are this way. And yet they have the ability through Hollywood to make themselves sound so good and look so right. And the propaganda that is poured out upon the, the minds and hearts of the American people who want so bad for things to be like they used to be. And so they figure if they put a president in there and give him his way, that that God will turn. God will never, never support these people. He will never be with them. He will never help them. Oh, he might let them get away with some of the stuff they do because he knows he has it planned. There's a time where they're going to be dealt with. He t tells you, he shows you even in the book of Revelation where the children, uh, where the people are, uh, that have been, uh, uh martyred says, when, when are you going to do something, Lord? And he said, when those that are going to be martyred, uh, are going to be with you, then, then he will move. But I put out a video not too long ago about how God, uh, he is going to move on his church first. Understand this, the church for decades has, and, and, and I won't say just one religion, please do not think that what you, the atrocities that you have seen going on only happened in one religion, because it didn't. It has nothing to do with the religion. It has to do with the heart of man. It has to do, every church is only as good as the pastor that, that is behind it, that does things. And then he's only as good as the parishions, parishioners are, because the parishioners could have stopped him by turning their back on him. I mean, you take a good look at Jim Jones. He could have been stopped a long time ago. If you take a look at the Beatles and Jim Jones and others, they were all, all called, called by God. But no one, no one would correct them when they started going bad. No one would stand up to them and tell them the truth. And the people who are parishioners that think they have the power to do that, they're, oh my goodness, they bring so much trouble on their hearts and their minds because they're not called to it. It takes a, a a called man or woman of God to do that. And if you think that you've gone through a couple of years of training and a couple of things, that, and you think that you are just like me, I mean, you. some of you actually tell me, well, I know just what you mean because I've been through that. God put me in training. Well, you know what? Maybe God put you in training in one thing. And even then he did not 
do the extensive. But when he put me in training, he put me in training in all things. Maybe he talked to you for one year, but he talked to me for many years. Maybe he talked to you for a couple of weeks or a couple of months, but he talked to me for years and years. So he was filling me up with my anointing where I was only listening to him. But I'm telling you that America does not need a foreign enemy to come and bombard them and bond them with the work of H-A-A-R-P. Who needs, who needs a, a, a bomb? They're bombarding, bombarding us with things for this Green New Deal. They're bombarding us to prove climate change. And, and people are so ignorant. They support this. They literally help them. So you have the babies is one thing, but you have the climate change that is non-existent. You take a good look at what the scripture says about the climate, where Jesus has control over the wind and the rain. He's not, if you pray and you have a drought, you can get rain. If you pray and believe God, the rain will come. If you have too much rain and it's coming to a flood, you can stop it. I, I know for a fact that you can because I've experienced it. I have walked outside and I was in a hurry to go somewhere and I had my hair fixed. I was all ready to grow, go. This was in the days that I, that I, I used to take careful watch with myself. Where, whereas now I don't wear any makeup. I don't, anything. It doesn't matter because I know that's unimportant. But as I walked outside, it began to rain. And I looked up at God and said, you're going to do this now, Lord? Just like that. Come on now. What is this? What are you doing? And instantly the rain stopped. Instantly. I am trying to explain to you that that kind of relationship with God, it doesn't come overnight. And it doesn't come by trying to imitate me. I have gone before God when I've had a broken bone. And I mean, I, I've told him, where, where are your angels? I expect him to always be there. Probably mainly because he always showed me he was. But I expect him. It's, it's written in my book how rebellious I was against him. And he was still always there because he understood all the things that I had been through that made me the way I was. And so he was very, very kind and very gracious. But if I were to act that way today, believe you me, I'd get the spankings of my life because I know better, just like you know better. During those hours, I did not have what I have now. I was not able to think. All I could do was feel. Some of you people out there, all you have is your emotions. All you have is your feelings. I mean, you will literally see a woman, because Hillary lost, this woman will sit down and scream at the top of her lungs. That is an emotional illness. And I hear tell that that uh, Biden in the White House says that uh, that the American people are ill. <laughs> sure, they don't think filthy. They don't think dirty. They don't they don't do these things. They want no parts of pedophilia and drug cartels and and all this other stuff. So you you consider them ill because the new normal is being dirty, filthy, and rotten. I mean, my hat is off to uh, to the woman. And the mothers that stand up and tell them that what you are teaching in school under the guise of sexual education is filth. Nothing but filth. Because it's true. So, I'm only saying to you what you need to hear. You need to see things as they are, not as you want them to be. So, every time you dip into the mainstream media and you think that you have to hear them because you have to know what's going on. They're not telling you what's going on. They're feeding you propaganda. There is a powerful spirit there that almost makes you addicted to it to cause you to want to come back for more and want to hear more. It's like an entertainment that they are doing. They're putting on a show and they know it's all lies. And people like you who claim Christ and you walk one hand with God and the other hand with Satan, you think that that's going to work for you? You think the whole world and this nation is going to be destroyed because you want to play games with God? 
You want to do it your way. Nobody's going to tell you how to live. Nobody's going to tell you what to do. Nobody's going to come and say one word to you because you, you have brains. I mean, I've heard people say that. Well, God gave me the brains to know what to do. And they're so stupid, they don't know what to do. They're, sure, God gave them brains, but they won't use them. They won't use them towards God. They only use them towards their own selfish little circle. You have a sphere of influence. You have a sphere of power in your life. And and I, I will say this, that you have uh, everybody in your life that you're connected to. I don't believe they'll go to hell because they've got you in their life. They've got you able to pray for them. They've got you able to stop. I don't believe. But the people who have made themselves your enemy, where they have literally through lies and deceit decided they were going to turn on you those people aren't in your sphere of influence those people are invaders those people uh, you can pray against invaders you can pray against takers coming and taking whatever they want to out of your life and then delivering you with what they want you to have you don't some people don't even understand you do not sit down in fellowship with anybody because they say they're a Christian. Do you know that if if I would have to sit down at a table with Obama and I received him as a Christian because he said he was a Christian, do you know the spanking of God that would come on me? That because everything that he has evil in his life by agreement would be a part of me. And God will never put up with that with me. People in your life that you don't even know that because they say they're Christian, well, oh, he just seems like a nice guy. And oh, she just seems like a nice person. You're supposed to try those spirits and find out if they are or not. Because some of them are filled with evil. What they have evil intention. They want to use you as merchandise. They want to use you to say, look at me. Look what I brought to church. Look at me. This is my friend. Look at what God did. For no, that's not what life is about. There is no way any of us should want to anybody else to see what we are doing. This even these videos, these videos are not made so you could see what Marianne Lynch is doing. They are made for you that you can hear, that you can understand and get out of where you're at. You walk hand in hand with the enemy. You have to, you have to have the discernment for God to tell you. Uh, you know, I met a new neighbor down here and she stood there and, and she had her nose up in the air like this when she talked. She was so far up in the air that she couldn't see anything but her nose. And she said to me, well, you know, those people who will not follow God, who will not live righteously for God is a righteous God and he is holy. Those people that live like this or like that, they're going to answer. They're going to pay. God knows that they should be this and they should be that. And I just looked at her and I said, have you ever been raped? And she said, no. I said, have you ever been, somebody attempted to murder you? She says, no. I said, did you ever suffer beatings of any kind until you passed out? And she says, no. I says, have you suffered anything physical that's so traumatic, such as cancer or anything else? And she says, no. I says, did you ever suffer physical abuse from your parents? Did you ever suffer the way some children have suffered where they were raped by their own parents? Did you ever go through any of those things? And she went, no, I didn't. And I says, well, you know, in order for you to understand that, yes, God is a righteous, holy God, and he is a righteous, holy judge, but he does not take those that have been forced and abused and blind and, and gone through everything. So, and then they're looking for God and you're going, you're going to pay for what you have done. You don't understand the God you serve. He doesn't do that. He has compassion on them and he will walk, uh, he will leave the 90 and nine and to get that one out of the ditch. 
he he will strive to carry it home and and bind up its wounds and do everything so that he can save it because the ones that are safe in a pasture he knows they're safe they're all right they don't need him that 90 and that one from the 90 needs him from the 100 they need him desperately and you think he's going to look at them like they're a piece of garbage and he's going to throw his nose up in the air and say, you must be a certain way. You must, you must. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Everything within me knows that that woman is heading for a wrong place. Because if you have no pity, no compassion, no mercy on those. I mean, I've known people come to me crying that at the age of four years old, their dad would give them the the asthma medication at night and the mother would hear the bed banging on the wall as the father forced the little four-year-old girl to have oral sex on him. You haven't been there where they sit down and tell you that their parents, that their father beat them and then raped them and beat them and raped them to make them what they are. You haven't heard that. You haven't been in the presence of people who think that God hates them because of what was done to them. You haven't been there where they think that they could never find God because in their condition of what has happened to them. You've never been in, in the presence of a, of a little girl whose parents uh, had problems between one another. And because those problems were so great, then the little girl can't find the truth. And so what does she do? The, after the father drinks for years and years and doesn't want her, then suddenly he comes into her life and tells her, you don't have to listen to your mother. You don't have to, you don't have to obey the Bible. You don't have to, uh, go to church. I'll take you and I'll take you here and I'll take you there. And he sticks out his chest and he uses her to prove that he is something. And everywhere he goes, he uses her to prove that he is something. And he practically, because the girl, uh, was raised by the mother by herself, he practically steals that little girl because that little girl is so desperate for her father that she'll do anything. And so unfortunately for her, her, her choices in life have destroyed her. And, and you can tell that person that they're going to cry and they don't, they won't believe you. They'll stick their nose up in the air and they won't believe you. And, and I've warned them. I must, told him, you're going to cry for this. God's not going to put up with this. You are going to cry. And I watched them cry. I've watched them cry when their children turned. I've watched them cry because of the consequences of what they did. And unfortunately, the innocent child paid for it and is still paying for it. Where that ignorant parent didn't give a lick about any of them. So, you know, you may have think that you fast, you, you may have thought that you faced a lot of things, but you know what? As many things as I've gone through, I know, I know with all my heart, they are nothing compared to the atrocities that are going on today on children. If my own father who beat me would have raped me or touched me in any way, I think I would have killed myself. And I think that's why God had it so. Of all the things this man did, he respected my body. He never, ever came near me or touched me. And that is that is the truth. That even though he would go into rages and he beat me and he beat my mother, he still didn't do that. I honestly think I may have killed him or me. One or the other or both. Because I really, really believe that was one thing I could not stand. I had been through so many atrocious things. I mean, I had been through things where my grandmother tried desperately to kill me. She claimed she was trying to kill the baby that was in me. I was nine years old. And she was speaking in a foreign language to my grandfather, calling me a putta, telling me that I... I telling him that I had laid with men, which I never did. I, I had no idea. I was 50 years old before I found out what a puta meant. 
I had no idea what she was calling me. And he beat me. Listening to her, he beat me with a cat of nine tails. And she gave me a, a bottle of laxatives and forced me to take the whole bottle. I didn't know what it was. It was years later I found out it was a bottle of a laxative and it could have killed me. And I can remember being in the horror cellar, the cellar where she would take both of the chickens and take them by the head and swing their body and scream at the top of her lung as she strangled them, screaming. And, and making sure that we as children were terrified and the witchcraft that she was in and all the witchcraft that I felt in that woman, came, I felt in Hillary Clinton. When she came on, when Hillary Clinton came on the scene for the uh, debate with Trump, right there, come flooded through the room, came her witchcraft. And it was all those demons that had my grandmother. So it was easy for me to rebuke him out of her that she would never win. I mean, it was an easy task for me to do because I rebuked him out of my grandmother. And when I got old enough, but believe me, it was years after I had suffered so much under the hands of this woman. So she almost killed me. I was vomiting in in, in the commode down there and I was diarrheaing and bleeding because I had got my period because she had my monthly because she had told my father, my grandfather, that I was put up because I had gotten my monthly so early. And, and it was as bad as that was. I never hated her. No one will ever tell me that whatever happens to you is a reason to hate someone. Because I never hated my father. I was angry at my father. And when I'd see him beat my mother, I did want to kill him. But I forgave him easily. Because as soon as I looked at him, I realized that Jesus Christ forgave me. How could I not forgive him? And I labored with him to see him saved. And my grandmother died in my arms, calling on the name of Jesus. My father died wanting the Bible and Jesus. And, and when he had Alzheimer's and was emaciated so bad. And I didn't see him for months. And when I walked into the room, because I was very ill, I had lupus and I couldn't go and take care of him. So when I walked through the room and he saw me, he was deep into Alzheimer's and he immediately woke up, immediately looked at me and said, Marion. And the first thing he said to me was, get me a Bible because he associated the Bible with me. Because we had many a talk before he he went down with Alzheimer's. Five months before he started, his memory started slipping. I was able to talk to him every day about the Bible. Now, this is a man that others had witnessed to. And he, I was born a Catholic. I'm going to die a Catholic. No one's going to ever convince me. And, it, and, uh, and he would say such terrible things about the Bible. And I never witnessed it like that to him. I never cut up his religion, nothing. All I ever did was the way I talk to you, the way I tell you about the love of Jesus Christ. I would tell him how God would come and talk to me and show me the way. And, and, and I spent five months, five and six hours a day with him, talking to him like this about nothing else but God and his love. And at the end of that time, he came to me and said, Marion, do you think God will talk to me the way he does to you? And I said, of course, Dad. Read your Bible. He'll talk to you through that. And he got saved, just like my, my grandmother. She, she only thing she knew was if somebody witnessed to her and told her about uh Jesus and how her church did this and her church did that. And so when she saw me, she thought I was going to do the same thing. And she'd say, I don't want your Jesus. I don't want nothing to do. I know our church persecuted him. Okay, but I don't want you. So I'm just letting you know, stay away from me. But you know what? She found out. I don't talk like that. I don't do that. All I talked to her about was that Jesus left her and Jesus died for her. And she died praising the Lord on her lips. She died. She died. The way she died was she, she died a horrible death in excruciating pain. And, uh, and when she died, I took care of her for six weeks and never left the hospital. And the priest would come in because she was Catholic 
and they would talk to me and they knew I never left that hospital. And some of those priests turned away from being a priest. They didn't want to be Catholic anymore. I didn't tell them anything except they questioned me and asked me about my relationship with my mother and all of it was connected with my grandmother. All of it was connected to God. And when they left, I found out they left the ministry because they saw an example of Jesus Christ that was unlike anything that they had ever seen. I had doctors come to me and tell me and they put their heads down, couldn't even look at me and say, we know Everyone on this floor in this hospital knows that you have God. When you're taking care of your grandmother, her spirits are up. Everything is great. And and uh, unfortunately, somebody in the family pressured the nurses to, to give her too much medication. And now she's in a narcotic stupor. Would you please help us to bring her out of it? We have seven nurses here. We will give you and they will do everything that you say because we know God will guide you. And he did. And he did. And when she finally woke out of the narcotic stupor, you could hear her let out a cry. Because I was busy witnessing at the, at the door of the room. And many people were stopping. And like the woman next door said, what is this Holy Ghost you talk about? What is this Bible? You know, and as I was talking to them, I turned around and looked and I heard her in her broken English say, me quan die, me quan die, like that. She woke up calling mama. And I found out that most people who die call their mother. And so I went to her immediately and I held her hand and looked straight in her eyes so close. And I said, oh, no, Nana, you're not going to die. You're going to live forever. Jesus is coming for you. And I remember, I remember seeing Jesus stand right at that bed with tears coming out of his eyes. And I said, all God asks of you is for you to praise him and thank him because he's going to take you to heaven. You're going to live forever. And Jesus, taking you, Jesus, taking you, Jesus. And those were her last words. Oh, this woman who hated my mother, who was responsible for my dad's, my dad's uh, girlfriend beating her, who was responsible for so much that had happened to me. The love of God was so real. I could not bear anything less but to see her make heaven. This is Jesus Christ. This is what he's about. This is all of life is connected to forgiveness and repentance and turning away from what you want, what you think. I'm not going to say I didn't hate my grandmother. I did before I got saved. But when I looked at her, I knew, I knew God forgave me for everything. How could I not forgive someone else? I knew that he died for her and his desire was for her to be healed. I knew that and I lived that way and I would live that way and crawl today if I had to. I would crawl to see God save them again and again. I would do it. All those who have hated me, many of them are dead. Many of them have gone past on. Some of them died calling my name. And I cried because I wanted them to call the name of Jesus. But they called my name because they were remembering what they did to me. And all I wanted was for them to find Jesus. So when you think about your testimony, testimonies are for other people to be touched and to hear that Jesus is real. He really changed my life. He changed my thinking. And whenever I found and felt myself slipping, I would beg him, please, don't let me go there. Please, don't let me turn back. Please, I don't care what it costs, because I can't live without you. I would rather die. I would rather die. And I'd beg him, I'd beg him, kill me now, because I can't take it. Please help me, Lord. You think I'm so strong. You think I'm so much. And I'm nothing. I'm nothing. I am a human being just like you. The only difference is, is the Lord gave me the power 
to do the right choices so I could come and tell you. So you could pattern yourself after Jesus Christ, not after me. For this is the heart of Jesus Christ. Here he lives right here. The book of John says, the, the epistle of John says, that if someone knocks at your door and they do not have the doctrine of Christ, they do not believe that Jesus has come in the flesh, do not wish them Godspeed. Have nothing to do with them. Don't even let them in your house. Everybody thinks that scripture means that Jesus has come in the flesh when he first came on the earth. Practically everybody believes that. What he was talking about is the people who do not believe that Jesus has come in the flesh in you and in me. But if you only have this much of Jesus Christ and all the rest is you, and then you get angry and mad because nobody will listen to you. If you have not gone before God with everything, and you only have this much as a result of it, and you demand God to deal with that one that's persecuting you, to deal with that one that's lying on you, they're there for a reason. They're there so that you can turn away from your sin, so that you can turn away from your resentment, your every, your anger, your how dare you, your, so that you can turn away from that. If anybody has a right to think, how dare you, it is Jesus Christ. If anything, anybody has ever suffered anything, it is Jesus Christ. What we go through is nothing compared to what he can go through and has gone through. To this day, they are trying to make him a homosexual. They are trying to make him married. They are trying to make him, to this day, they are persecuting and lying on him. So why are you so ignorant that you feel somehow that you are greater than him, that you don't have to suffer that? That you don't have to be hated because you love him? My friend, my friend, please. Please hear these messages because they'll change your thinking. They will operate on your mind and help you to be what Christ wanted you to be. Because God is after building an army, an army that overcomes Satan. And Satan has been after keeping that from happening. God's going to do, and this is a prophecy, God's going to do a changeover in the churches where the pastors are concerned. He's going to take that pastor that's lying and stealing and cheating and playing and using the church and using the money and doing. He's going to take them and remove them out of those churches because God has to come and hold them accountable first. For the Bible says that judgment begins at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, where will the sinner and ungodly appear? So in order for God to make this shift in the world, he's going to make a shift in the church. And those pastors, they need to repent because many of them, you have no idea. They praise the Lord and they, and they uh, like do what Jude says. They have no fear of God in them. They feast with you and have no fear of God in them. I remember the first message I ever uh did on the radio and I cried and I cried because I knew it was going to touch the heart of so many and then I heard somebody came to my door and said do you know so and so was a pastor and he stepped down so and so over here was a pastor and he stepped down because in that message I had told them if you are doing these things you need to step down and let somebody who is holy take your place Somebody who is better qualified than for you standing there and opening up the door to Satan and causing your church to be infiltrated by Satan and go through things they don't need to go through all because of your disobedience and thinking God is hiding it. That was my first message. And there's a little more to it. Now I'll, I'll do it on the next next video.